Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Electrolectors. And today we're gonna to take a look at my Game Boy collection. From the Game Boy original to the 3DS. All the games that are in between, I don't have very big of a library for each console. It's basically just a bunch of games that I found loose and I did a little bit of artwork to actually make them displayable on my shelves. They hold up so well. Whenever you want to go somewhere, like I think the original Game Boy holds up a lot more than the 3DS or the, the DS line of games. I find that these ones are just, they take you back to a certain pirate of nostalgia where like you remember being under certain lights and trying to play or handing it off to a, an older sibling. They used to play and try to get further than I could and they would hand it back to me. I just love playing that. 3DS and all that and the DS afterwards, that nostalgia kind of wore off just because I was a lot older but then the games were just if I was at a cottage or if I was just laying in bed, I was just playing these games on the 3DS or the DS. Whereas these ones were like road trips. I used to take trips to New York and bring my Game Boy. And if I was lucky enough to grab a game in New York or somewhere else on this road trip, I was lucky to have a game, new game, play on the go, in the car, by actual street light, which was really hard to do. And I used to love playing games on the go and they were just an amazing time back then and first off we're going to start with my game boy original it's a ips modded one where you could change the screen color with the simple button press on the side i love this thing it's so great i play this all the time i love the fact that it's so bright now and you can see the the actual colors where my original game boy it had a dead set of pixels on it and it was very hard to see if you're a game boy player if you no, grew up in the 80s you knew that you had to be under a certain light to actually be able to see it they said it wasn't humanly possible all the power and excitement of nintendo right in the palm of your hand introducing game boy it's portable it's in stereo and its games are interchangeable game boy comes complete with batteries and the outrageous new game tetris and for head-to-head -head competition use video link and blow your opponent away Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power. Now I put these in cassette cases just because it's just easy to display. By putting them in cassette cases, which I got the artwork printed off of the cover project and I just had some photo paper laying around and I printed it up on my printer and they came out really, really good. There's a little bit color bleed here and there. I love them displayed just like that and having them put on the shelf and whenever I want to reach for one, I could just simply put it, pull it out without having to go through a binder that a lot of people put these games in, card holders, and they just they just look sloppy that way. The binders become overgrown, and I just I hate the look of that. So I found that by putting them on the shelf, they seem to be a little bit displayed, a little bit more proud while on the shelf. Choplifter, another Game Boy game, standard Game Boy game. DuckTales 2, I found this at a thrift store and I absolutely love this game. It's so much fun. It's exactly like DuckTales on the NES. It's just a little bit difficult by my standards. Game Boy games, I find them to be a little bit harder. Maybe I can get through it now, but when I first popped it in, I was having a lot of troubles with it. Next, we're gonna have a game that I played a lot as a kid and that's F1 Race. It was very simplistic, but being able to play two players on the go was an amazing time on the road. It was just so much fun. Such a basic game, but so much fun nonetheless. Next up is Looney Tunes. I feel it's like Tiny Toon Adventures on the NES. You get to play by different characters got? and the gameplay is really fun. The music's fantastic. Sunsoft has a known record that when they put out game, the music is fantastic. The controls are a little bit slippery. I find that when you get to an edge of a, a, like a cliff or something like that, you tend to slide a little bit further than you want to, but it is what it is. It's a great game nonetheless. The graphics are fantastic, and I really, really enjoy that game. Next, Mega Man. I found this for like a dollar in the thrift store. I was amazed that I actually found anything because usually whenever I go to this thrift store, I always find open case PS3 games and they're all loose or they're all sports games or emotional damage. 
Twitch. Just a bunch of nonsense in there, and I was just rifling through. I, I was hoping to actually find a Wii game or a PlayStation game that was in the wrong case, but I didn't come across that. So when I was rifling through, I came across this was buried at the bottom of the bin. I tend to keep the more expensive games in their original NES cases. They still fit perfectly with a little bit of modification in the cassette. You can modify these by just cutting off one of the pegs. Next up is a game that I played a lot, and that's Metroid 2. Next part of my collection is a Game Boy Pocket. I just picked this up for like 40 bucks. Somebody actually was selling it on the Facebook Marketplace and I was, I'm in love with the Game Boy Pocket. It plays the exact same games as the original Game Boy. That alone was a big selling point for moving up because the original Game Boy had a very poor screen. And when you got this one, it had a better LCD screen. The games look so much more vibrant on it. That's why it was one of my favorite ones because the screen was just a lot better. Now onto the Game Boy Color. Unfortunately, I don't have a Game Boy Color. I had one, obviously, when I was a kid. I had just about everything when I was a kid and you stupidly sell it away. I want to get one eventually. I really did enjoy playing the Game Boy Color. Just the different color palettes, playing Pokemon with the different color palettes was a mind blast. That was just amazing. And the ability to play original Game Boy games on the Game Boy Color was a great deal breaker as well when I upgraded and I'm gonna play driver on it I haven't played it yet again I don't have a Game Boy Color so I haven't played anything on it I haven't really looked up any gameplay footage on it next up is Mega Man Extreme it's similar to I guess Mega Man 10 I haven't played it yet I just assume the extreme representing the 10 after the Game Boy Pocket I did pick up a Game Boy Advance. My original one was, again, Atomic Purple. Picked this up, black. I found it, I think, for like $30, and it came with a bonus Mario Advance and Super Mario World. And the few games I have on the Game Boy Advance, that's F-Zero Maximum Velocity. I'm not a big fan of F-Zero. I know there's a lot of people that really do enjoy the F-Zero franchise. Next up is a game I play almost yearly. I would say every once every two years. It's a game that I absolutely love. It's a franchise that I actually really adore. And that's Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I absolutely love this game. It's so much nostalgia playing it. When I was a kid, I had it and I played the hell out of it. Didn't clear it when I was a kid, but playing it now, it, brings back so much nostalgia, brings back so much memories. It holds up so well in comparison to a lot of games that come out now or even in the past. This is my top three Legend of Zeldas by far. I love this game. Next on the Advanced is a game that has a big cult following. I've heard a lot of it, but I just never really played it. I've played a little bit to test it out and I got stuck, so I just put it on the back burner and that's Golden Sun. I heard it's an amazing game. Games like RPGs are a little bit harder now to play. 80 hours sometimes where you're sinking into a, an RPG. I don't have that kind of time to play an RPG anymore. Though sitting on the couch does entice me a little bit more to play this game. Next up is a game I didn't play at all. I have no nostalgia about uh, other than the original on arcades and the Sega Genesis. I didn't really play much of this series and that's Mortal Kombat. I'm not a big fan of Mortal Kombat. The crossovers, I didn't mind. The DC versus Mortal Kombat, I Get enjoyed. I just, I'm not a big fan of Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 1, I enjoyed because it was uh, arcades. It was one of the biggest things at that point. The gameplay at that point was top of the line. But as you're playing them more and more, I just, I, I find that I'd much rather play Street Fighter. <gasps> Lastly on the Advance is a game that, again, I played a little bit, got stuck, and I just never went back to that. And that's Sword of Mana. I don't enjoy getting lost in games when I just want to play through a game. Gameplay wise, it's really good. I played the collection of mana on the Switch. I detested it. I find that playing it, I lost my game save more than once on multiple different games. I was so overstretched from the collection of mana and how it screwed me over that when I played this, I'm no longer interested in it at all. Next up is the handheld that lost the Game Boy name and that's the Nintendo DS. I played this 
kind of semi-regularly. I have the R4 chip, and the game that I got with this through a friend was Metroid Hunters. The one thing I did like about the actual DS is the fact that you can play Game Boy Advance on the bottom and DS games on the top. You had the ability to play both, and that was a selling point alone. I love anything that's backwards compatible. For me, I'm the type of person that doesn't get a very big library, and when I do get a, a game, I want to be able to play it on any console or any handheld or anything uh, that I want to. I don't want to have to be narrowed down to one thing. Next up is my 3DS. Well, not my favorite, just because it's just a little bit cumbersome. I don't like the fact that the screen is very wobbly. 3D, I never use at all. It's a gimmick that fell flat on me. I, when I put it on in any game that I'm playing, I feel like I'm getting a headache. I feel my eyes are crossing over and I just, I can't stand it. I tried it on, I think, Luigi's Mansion and I just, I had to turn it off right away. It's an okay console. It's just not my favorite. And it really shows in my library. But we're gonna start off with one of my favorite games, Ocarina of Time. I love playing this game on the N64 and playing it again on the 3DS was great. They changed a little bit of the gameplay. It doesn't make or break the game. It's a game that I play, again, much like Link to the Past, almost once a year. Next is a game that actually brought me into the Luigi's Mansion lore. I didn't play the original Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. I overlooked it, and then Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon came out on the 3DS, and I absolutely love this game. I knew I would have enjoyed Luigi's Mansion, on the original GameCube. I just never sunk much time where I didn't even want to buy it then. I just, like I said, I moved on. I was playing a lot of multiplayer games then, so I didn't really spend much time playing single player games. I enjoy this game a lot. I enjoyed the Luigi's Mansion 3 a lot. I love the puzzles, being able to figure out certain things with your vacuum or sucking up the curtains and getting money behind it or, or ghosts that appear out of nowhere. It's just a lot of mindless fun and Luigi's mannerisms on screen it was such a great game i absolutely love this game next mario kart 7 didn't play much of it i have mario kart 8 ultimate on the switch so it's similar to that a lot of courses are from this game on the ultimate so i picked this up super cheap so i it's no brainer as to why i would have played it another game i don't really enjoy too much just because i got it in a bundle that's Mario Party. I don't like the N64 versions. I don't like the GameCube versions. I'm not a fan of it at all. Playing single player, I have it on the Switch as well. The kids somewhat play it. They got into a little spurt of playing it regularly and then they just stopped and I just, I never really enjoyed any of the games. I find it kind of tedious. I'd much rather a game with a story rather than just a bunch of gameplay modes and I'm, I'm not interested in it at all. Next is a game that really kicked my butt. This is one of the first games I got on the 3DS, and that's Shinobi. This was given to me from a friend. I played it a lot. I think I got to the last boss, and I can't beat it. It just, it, you have to use certain mechanics that you learn throughout the game, and I forgot those mechanics, and I just never went back to actually playing it. And next up is a game that I play quite a bit just to get all the coins. I think I got just about all the coins in this game. I really enjoyed this game. I find it, gameplay is very easy. Just the little gameplay mechanics I wish that I could change. The camera angles at times get hidden behind stuff, so blocks you can't really see. But I guess that's part of the charm of it where you're not supposed to be able to see everything. It's on a linear path, but it's still on an angle where you're not able to see everything where you need to explore certain things to find certain things. And there you have it. There's my small little Game Boy collection. Love the fact that I've modded my IPS Game Boy. I really find the IPS screen really brings the Game Boy to a current generation of handhelds. Let me know what you guys think right in the comments down below. If I'm missing any games that you guys think that I should be really playing and actually devoting a lot of time to, put it in the comments down below as well. Please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video at all. Thanks guys.